Guys, we're going on tour in February and make sure you click the link in the description to buy your tickets. If you've got a single ticket and you're not sat with your friends, do not worry because it is going to be an, a place where you can make loads of friends. You can message a Saving Grace account if you're feeling a little bit nervous and we can make sure that you know someone before you go. Um, this is a wholesome time. We're all going to get drunk and have a great time. So buy the tickets and get a vodka cranberry. Welcome back to another episode of Saving Grace. Today, we have got Miss Hallie. Hello. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm Honestly. Really excited to be here. For I'm for fucking me. Anytime. You can come back every week if oh, you want. Geez. And I'm here. Big brother. Yeah. Let's discuss. Hell on earth. Number no, one. <laughs> it's hell in there. I, so when I heard this was coming back, right? Yeah. I lost my shit. I had to pull over because I was like, this is it. Yeah. Why did you want to go in? So trans visibility is very important to me. Yeah. So I felt like a trans woman being on the show. Mm hmm would be fucking brilliant. Of course. And I've always been told that I'm just made for reality TV. I agree. And, oh, thanks. It's okay. And um, so I was just like, fuck it, why not? And then obviously, or it came out in September that you could audition. Yeah. I was 17. Oh, so yeah. So I turned 18 in December. Right. And then like fucked it off until January. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just apply. <laughs> just apply. And then got the phone call and I was like, wow. I want to talk about entrance. Yeah. Okay. That to me is my version of hell. Yeah, right? I shat myself. Yeah, because walking anyway yeah. in front of all those people and then you got to do the little yeah, little wave and then walk it. How was it? How were you feeling? So when I stepped out the car, mm -hmm. I shat myself, honestly. <laughs> like it was, it was it, your heart literally falls out your asshole. But then all the cheers and stuff make you feel so much better. Yeah. And then seeing that goddess, mm. AJ, yeah. Yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, she's fucking gorgeous. And then Will as well, bless his little heart. He's just, yeah, he's sweet as pie. And um, stepped on that stage, saw my mum, she started crying. Oh. So my lips started quivering. And I was like, fuck, I need to get in there before I start crying. You need to start walking towards so I just that door. Fucked off. And, and you inside. went in that. Yeah. We are entering our clean girl aesthetic autumn this year. And I'm imagining me sat in bed, PJs on, a cup of tea, my cat and a good old book. Realistically, it is hard for me to read a book. I don't have the attention span. So it is much easier when someone reads it to me, which is why I'm so excited about Audible. I'm not going to lie, Colleen Hoover took over my summer and you know what? I'm not complaining. Thankfully, Colleen's books are all available in audio format on Audible. As you can see, Audible has loads of fresh and exciting content and they're constantly releasing new and exclusive audiobooks. As you can see, Colleen Hoover has got all of her books on there. They're all amazing. And you've got so much to choose from. We've got Ugly Love. This one is five star rated on the app. So it's obviously a good one. Of course it is. It's Colleen Hoover. We've got all of our best selling ones on the app. Click of your fingers. So get on your go-to destination for audiobooks with Audible by tapping the link in the description of this episode. Thanks so much to Audible for sponsoring today's podcast and letting me get into my wholesome girl vibes. Do you have to wait a long time before you go in, as in like in the car? Yeah. You do? You do. How long yeah. are we talking? Long. Really? Yeah. So you're sat in a car with all the other cars. Um, you don't see anything. Any, everyone's blacked out. Ooh. And then to go to the toilet, you have to have like this umbrella over you, like in fucking black bags. Looks like something out of Star Wars. Jesus. Yeah. I couldn't see fucking things. So I'm in the toilet, like almost falling over. Um, and then they drive you in, they give you your countdown, mic you up. Oh, God. And they're like, fucking go ahead. Why am I getting anxious even just hearing about that? No, don't. It's made me anxious. Yeah. But once you're kind of inside and you don't see the crowd anymore. You're fine. You're fine. Do you know what I liked about you when you went in? Every person that would come in, you'd be the first person to go up to Yeah, because you know what it is? I'm mm. just like, fucking, come on, babes. Like, <laughs> I'm open Bring arms in. to everyone. Yeah. My Going in that, I wanted to be friends with everyone. Although mm -hmm. I kind of expected there are going to be people that piss me off. Yeah. I did want to be friends with everyone. Yeah. And they all are just so lovely. They, I think the casting of this year was so good because there's so many different people. 100%. Production it, done amazing. They fucking did there, but... They're very inclusive and diverse. Yeah. It was brilliant. So you go in. Who yeah. are you friends with in the house? Who are your people? Initially. Yeah. Uh, so obviously it was me, Kerry and Olivia that ended up being the little trio. Yeah. But at first I even told Olivia I thought she was going to be a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Kerry, I warmed up to straight away. Jenkin, mm-hmm. I thought he was going to be a very loud character. So did I. Mm-hmm. But he just sits back and observes. Tom was very much in his shell mm. on like the first night. Um, but I just immediately clicked with Kerry and Trish. Yeah. I saw, And I remember Kerry said in the diary room, she just wanted to mother you. Yeah. But it made me die because then it cut to you being like, I don't want to be fucking mothered. <laughs> if anyone tries to fucking mother me. I haven't me, watched it back. I'm like, have you not? No. What are you doing? I know. What am I doing? You need to you know watch what? it it's back. Just, it's long. I mean, yeah, to be yeah. fair, you got a lot of episodes. And also, to go I was through. in the fucking house. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> you know <were> there. what happened. <laughs> yeah, it's true. No, it's so true. So, when they set, actually, no, 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 no. we're just going to talk about the house first. Okay. okay. I've got so much to say. Number one, the bathroom. How the fuck do you shower in those showers? Okay. So, obviously, me being a tall babe, six foot three, and that. Yeah. yeah. My titties were on show. They were so above the glass. It's frosted, yeah, yeah. And then my nipples would just be poking <laughs> out. Like it was fucking hilarious. Um, and then I would get everyone to be like, oh, can you see my boobs? And then <laughs> they were, yes. Olivia came one time and she was just looking at me like that. And she was going, and she was just looking at the boobs. <laughs> um, but after a while, it was just really comfortable. Like we were all comfortable with each other. And I, like, I got in the bath a few times. You get used to it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you do. I was walking around the house in my underwear at times. <laughs> Yeah. I keep seeing Olivia do that. She's just trotting about in her thumb. I know, but she's like iconic. She's she just a is. free spirit though. She's grown on me as well. Cause in the first episode, I was like, hate her. Yeah. Cannot stat why is she singing. So she came across as a bit of a bitch mm. initially. Like even I even said to her in the house, like, I thought you were going to be really ditzy and a bitch. Yeah. But she actually has her head screwed on and she's not a bitch. She just says it how it is. She's yeah. very upfront. It's good to have in a house like that as well. It It is. And she's off her fucking nut. She used to work in a chip shop and randomly there's a video. I don't know if you've I've seen, seen it. it. She's like, oh, the, the thing of the day would be, oh, that's not her accent, but she's like, fish and cod. And you're fish like, and what? Cod, what? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, is that Olivia yeah. from Big it Brother? Is. I know. And she's like, yeah, we have this milkshake, that milkshake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she did say in the house she worked at a takeaway, but I thought she was more doing her dance thing. Yeah. It yeah. would make more sense. It would. Oh, well, she'll do it after the yeah. play. So she'll fucking Imagine you see it. her in a fucking takeaway <laughs> yeah. after Big Brother. Back there. Yeah. I'm like, come on now. Imagine. Come work she, here. She's fucking brilliant. So you're in the house. What is the day-to-day life of the house? So you fucking get woke up at God knows what time. Yeah. Because you have no concept oh, yeah, you of don't time. Know what time. So I figured out, right, okay. on our little mic packs, it shows how many hours of battery we have left. Oh. So right before bed, I would check. Yeah. And then when I woke up, I would check. Sometimes we'll get five hours, six hours, eight hours. Ooh. Like it was different every day. Fine. But getting woken up by them bright fucking lights. Yeah. Thinking, like heaven's gates are opening every morning. Mm-hmm. It's fucked. I You're was blinded. saying to you, when we went in the house before, the lights are criminal. Yeah. It's like being under, in like surgery. And they're so unforgiving. They're unforgiving. Unforgiving. Yeah. It's fucked. Even at the makeup table, the lights are horrendous. Are they? Yeah, they wash you out. I look pasty as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> More yeah. bronzer, please. No, on, I had bronzer on my arms, my legs, <laughs> my chest, everywhere. everywhere. And then I sat on the sofa one night when we was doing an eviction. I stood up and it looked like there was shit all over the sofa. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it was fucking everywhere. I love that. Yeah. It's but but um, the siren as well. The alarm you get woken up to fucking hell. It's too much. Too much. Yeah. We're not in fucking prison. Could have had birds, maybe. Honestly. They've got the budget for birds. They even one morning done fucking uh, drill sounds. Like, do you know road work? What? Yeah. What? Yeah, and then you <laughs> so just heard... Straight. Oh, hell. No. I'd be straight back to bed. Yeah. See you later. There's no way. Honestly. So do you do a challenge every day? Nope. There's a oh. lot of downtime. So yeah. some days you would do fuck all. Right. And you would be sitting there bored shitless. I think Big Brother got sick of me at some point because <laughs> yeah. I just kept going, I'm bored. Give me something to do. Yeah. Yeah. You just sit there and there's fuck all to do. So there's nothing to do but talk shit. And um, yeah, but when we had a task, we would not want a task. And when we done a task, yeah. we would want to just have a chill day. I, I can, win. yeah, I could foresee that. Very bittersweet. That's horrible. Yeah. And when you're doing your down days, how often do you get pulled to the diary room or not really? Um, do you know what? It's actually not that much. Hmm. So a lot of the time I would request to go in there. And, but when it was like, when I was having my diva moments, yeah. they would call me to the diary room. Fine. But um, some days, some housemates wouldn't get called there at all. Really? Yeah. I'd be worried about, I've got no screen time today. <laughs> That's how I'd 
Well, do you know everyone in there Mm. thinks that they each only get five minutes of screen time. So sometimes they have conversations. And even me, I was having conversation. I was like, oh, they won't air this. They fucking aired it. Because we all just thought you you got five minutes each. No, that's horror. Yeah. Could could a producer not step in and be like, by the way, that's a lie? Yeah. I was talking about sucking toes. (laughs) I was talking about everything. And I was like, oh my fuck. They won't air this. And they aired it. They aired it. Oh my God. Do you know what? Great telly though. I've got to say, great telly. Don't. I enjoyed it. I'm glad you did. How did you feel? So the first eviction comes up, right? Well, you went yeah. up for the first one, weren't no, you? No, it was Kerry and Farida. How did you feel when Farida left? Ecstatic. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Do you know what? She's actually really lovely, but she was quite annoying in the house because mm. on the first day when we were broken up, she literally stood up on a chair, clapping her hands. What? And she was like, guys, like AGM did an annual... Go- and- annual general meeting right okay and she was like we need to figure out what we all bring to the table to make good tv and so we're all like no (laughs) like we want to make organic tv yeah um and that's why i think kerry initially went off her because she right because then she had thought that farida was putting on some sort of persona yeah but the woman just don't stop talking. I get, that's funny because you never see stuff. I mean, obviously you wouldn't yeah. see stuff like that, but you never really have context for it. No, you don't. And that's why a lot of time people get perceived as being a bitch. Mm. But um, Farida, she just don't stop talking. <laughs> and like you would talk to her and like somehow the conversation would just be made about herself again. Yeah. Yeah. But you're like, here we go. I saw her mm. last weekend and she had nothing but love for me. Went home, went on TikTok and she's in comments calling me a two-faced game player. What? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Is this on her lives? Because I see her do lives a lot now about Big Brother. Yeah. So this no. wasn't on her live. <laughs> yeah. Someone posted a, a TikTok about Big Brother and then in the comments someone wrote, yeah, what do you think of Hallie? This, that, that, that. And it wasn't even asking Farida. It was asking the, the oh, player, yeah. that person that made the video. And Farida was like, she's two-faced and a game player. And I replied to her comment. I went, Farida, what's going on, babes? <laughs> what's going on? What's happened here? Yeah. No. I know. Fucking hell. I was shocked. I, that, um, I felt that in my chest, honestly. What did you think about Zach before he left? So initially, I was hearing things from other housemates like Chanel, Jenkin, yeah. Tom, um, Kerry, Olivia. And so I thought he was playing a game because mm. the conversation of money came up as right. well. And he said, yeah, he wouldn't be happy to leave with like no less than the hundred grand, this, that, that, that. I don't mm. know that I wasn't there for the fucking conversation. Yeah. So I was taking what I heard from other people and made a judgment of him. Yeah. But then after I'd called him a game player and got sent to fucking <laughs> prison, um, I had a conversation with him and actually realized he's actually a really decent bloke. What, was that awkward? You know, when they make you stand up and they're yeah. reading out what Well, they didn't said. make us say anything. So I had stood up and yeah. I'm that type of person that I will say what the fuck I said and mm-hmm. say it again. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. whatever Do I said, I'll say it of chest. Yeah. So they said, Hallie, do you have anything to say? And I was like, do you guys want to know what was said? Yeah. And they were all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I just said, Zach's a game player and mm. I think Matty nominated me. Yeah. And Noki thought I was talking about her. So it wasn't actually about no. her. Okay. No. So the N-O... They're fucking smart fuckers the way they edited that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I watched it back, that episode, and you see me say N-O, stop spelling. And they cut it short when I spelt the other letters. So it looked like I spelt Noki's name. When in actual fact, the reason I said oh stop spelling yeah. was because I thought I was breaking a rule, not by writing messages, but saying nominated. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah, it was fucked. And then... Noki thought I was talking about her, which I found confusing because her and Olivia had a conversation literally the day before saying Olivia would never indulge yeah. in conversations to do with Noki. Mm-hmm. And then I broke another fucking rule <laughs> by trying to reassure Noki I didn't have shit to say about her. Yeah, uh, and then you went to prison. No, I went to prison for the writing messages and yeah. then I got the sandwich board yeah. for telling reassuring Noki. Remember that sandwich sure? with the coat? Oh my God. Yeah. Why did I think that was on the same? No, that was the next day. So, fucking hell, you're in a world of it. Uh. But you, they've got to, they've got to expect you to explain that to Noki. You can't just be like, yeah. no. And that's what I'm saying. And yeah. then Big Brother also <clears> said <throat> when we were all on the sofa and before we got sent to prison, um, no nomination rules were broken. So when they said I'd broken the rule by talking to Noki, I'm thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> what rule? What rule, honestly. <laughs> what rule? But then after that, I was just like, right, I'm not going to say the N-word. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> like I, what Yimran said. Oh my gosh. I saw that when her. I got out and that cracked me that up. That is one of the funny, I have never seen someone cry like that Don't. in my entire life. It broke my heart. It was incredible. When they said Yimran had broken a rule. Yeah. Well, initially I was thinking, <clears throat> who the fuck broke the rule? Olivia was like, fuck, I think I've broken a rule. I'm yeah. thinking, oh my God, what have <laughs> I be said? With me. Yeah. And then yeah. when they said Yimran, I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one was mad. No one was yeah. mad. And she honestly, the way she was crying, I felt for her. Like, she's honestly too sweet and innocent. Like, but prison oh, changed her. We have, yeah. we, have pr we have prison names. Didn't she start drinking? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> fuck. Yeah, what she fuck did. Happened? She was uh, like, she was like, yeah, I want a mojito. I was like, yeah, you've turned to the fog life. <laughs> this is one honestly. day in prison for you. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I love that for her though. Honestly. Honest opinions here. When you were in the house... Jordan, Henry, what's going on? Okay, so when they and live, I was on it. They mm -hmm. were like, are you aware of the love triangle between Jordan, Henry and Matty? Matty, I didn't even think was a factor. Right. I just thought it was Jordan and Henry. Okay. Because I'd even asked them in the house, would you guys shag on yeah. the outside world? And they said no. So, but you see sparks. Yeah. And they kiss under the table. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. It's a proper... <laughs> yeah. It's a little smooch. It's a proper smooch. Yeah. And so... I'm not shocked by Jordan and Henry, but I think Jordan loves it secretly. Because I think by the looks of things, he actually likes Matty more and doesn't like Henry. See, so I feel bad for Henry because mm. I saw on TikTok the other day how Henry said he's never had feelings like this for someone. But it hurts. Jordan loves entertaining Matty. Yeah, so yeah. It's, he's just a fucking playboy. Do you think, how do you think this is going to end? Fuck, I don't fucking know. I think Henry's going to make it known and be like, you need to tell Matty how you feel so I have reassurance. Yeah. What not. But yeah. I, I'm shipping Jenry. I'm not going to lie. I really want really? them two to work. Do you know what? I agree. I don't want Matty involved in this. I don't. I don't want this to be a thing. No. He's in an open relationship. I know. Jordan was like, yeah, how's that going to work? <laughs> yeah, it's so true. He doesn't even know. If, yeah. Honestly, I'm shipping Jenry. I agree. I really, I need it to happen. Otherwise, it's going to ruin the, the last few months of my year. Yeah. It's so, I don't like how everyone's putting Paul and Olivia together. Today's sponsor of the podcast is Skin and Me. Skin and Me is an accessible, fast track way to get amazing skin. All you've got to do is fill out a questionnaire online all about your skin and the problems you've got. And they will make your very own skincare to match your skin. Skin and Me blends scientifically proven active ingredients to give you the best skin. All packaged up in their award-winning daily doser. And if that wasn't enough for you, it's also personalized with your name. Daily Dosa ensures that you use the right amount of cream every evening. I've been guilty to putting a little bit too much on, a little bit too little. So you don't have to worry with this. And also... That's money saving. You're not wasting your product. They also offer additional products like cleansers, moisturizers, and SPF. And if you know, you know about SPF. You don't want to grow old looking like a leather boot. It's time to grow old gracefully. Skin and Me will tailor to your skin. So whatever problem you've got, whether it's acne, whether it's textured skin, or whether it is just fine lines, they can help you with what you're struggling with. It is designed by an expert team of dermatologists. All you've got to do to start your Skin and Me journey is take three pictures of your skin and Skin and Me will design your very own skincare. Head to skinandme.com and use the code GRACE to get your first month for just £4.99 with the code GRACE. Usually it's £24.99, but again, if you use the code GRACE, you can get it for just £4.99. Yeah, can you explain this? Okay, so they just have like a very like brother sister right like mucking about of each other kind of relationship yeah because olivia made it clear like because we were all asked by chanel like who, what our type was okay and so initially mine was zach on the mm -hmm. first day and i was like you yeah, know this guy's giving me the ick yeah um, and, <laughs> yeah. I, and i moved on to paul and i was like oh yep. he's just so dreamy and olivia was like yeah no paul's not my type and zach was more her type Ooh. but because paul and olivia are, are both so they just play silly buggers all the time yeah they get along like a house on fire. Right. So it comes across it's like that. It's never, yeah, but it's never like, it's never been flirty. Mm. But they's ne they've never had a flirt. They've never like no. complimented each other. Oh, good. Yeah. It's <laughs> never been that. anything like that. And Olivia was getting pissed off in the house because mm. people were comparing her to Paul's girlfriend. Olivia, she's, 
worried about being perceived. Yeah. And like, especially with the name board thing. Mm -hmm. So I think Chanel done a bit of shit stirring with that. Really? Yes, because yeah. she was in a conversation with the girls. I wasn't present for the start of it. Conversation with the girls about Paul writing Olivia's name initially on the board, then rubbing it out and writing Tom's because Noki and Dylan had told him, like, pack it in, you have a girlfriend. Yeah. But he had said he didn't think of it like that. He just done it on, on who gave the greatest performance. So Paul yeah. said it was out of Olivia, me, Trish, and Tom. Right. So he wrote Olivia's name down. And then because they was like, you have a girlfriend, me and Trish were out the picture. So he wrote Tom. So Tom, he wasn't okay. writing another girl's name. Sure. Yeah. And then Olivia, because of that, she was like... I don't want to be perceived in like this type of way. Taking someone because else's man. She don't fucking like him. Well, she likes him, but she yeah, yeah, not like, like that. that. That's crazy. I know. Because that is a sort of thing now that everyone's like Paul and Olivia. Yeah. Polivia. Polivia. I don't, I don't, I don't ship. I don't ship, but the name has a ring. Yes. I, the name has a ring, but Jordan and Henry, I want that to be the show's l relationship. 100%. Defo. 120%. I need to lubricate my throat. Uh, lubricate it, darling. So we're going to talk about your eviction. Go on. How go did on. you feel when you found out you were nominated? Because for me, I'd be swinging. I cried my eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I cried my fucking <laughs> eyes out. Um, you said so, I'm going to burp. I was expecting to be nominated mm -hmm. because I was a raging bitch on wheels at times <laughs> in there and I gave people an excuse. But mm. Olivia had said to me, like, don't act like that in front of them. I think this was Ed because it gives them a reason to say your name yeah. in the room. But in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not going to filter myself. I'm going to be myself. Yeah. Otherwise, like, what's the point? What's the fucking point? Mm. So when I was up for nomination, I cried. Because I felt like I'd made a tit of myself. Right. I was like, I haven't made people proud. I haven't. And that was my goal so, for being in yeah. there. So because of that, I was like so emotional because I feel like I had more to fulfill mm -hmm. and like more to share. And so I was really emotional. And then Kerry came and saw me. I don't know how the fuck she didn't see me under One the One of the most amazing clips. She's going into the bathroom. Dying. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm over here. And then she's like, fuck. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> Love it. She, um, yeah, and then eviction night came around, sat on the sofa, yeah, heart dropped out my asshole, mm. had this feeling in my stomach I was Gut gone up, and um, Kerry started getting emotional. I was like, save your fucking tears, like, <laughs> I'm a gone up, so just prepare yourself. And they said my name, and honestly, I was like, whoa yeah because although I was kind of expecting it, I wasn't, yeah, if you know what I mean, no, one it's was. just, I, I realized that now, yeah. Because I would, I thought I was going to go out and they hated me. Really? Yeah. I said that to Kerry. I said that to Big Brother. Mm. I had so many moments where I was like, they're going to hate me. Right. Because I was just, I felt like I was acting like a bitch at times in the house. Yeah. Well, As, I don't think so. But oh, thanks. That's okay. And um, so I just thought, yeah, they're going to fucking hate me. So I was ready to get booed. But when I heard the cheers, when they were saying Hallie, Trish, Dylan, yeah. it kind of warmed my heart a bit. Can you hear when people are going, get so-and-so yeah. out? You can. Clear as day. Even if one person says it, you can fucking hear it. Does that affect people? So when and the first <laughs> Get Kerry Out chant, yep. there was this one asshole that was, you could just hear him. Yep. When everyone would shut up, he would just carry on. And so it's horrible to hear because initially when I heard it, I just thought of, uh, Kerry's boys at home yeah and so I was thinking fuck like imagine her son seeing that yeah like, he's yeah really that's heartbroken. true mm. and um Kerry puts on a strong face but it gets in your nut of course it, it gets does. in your head and I'm thinking what have they seen that's made them hate me no that's so I went to the diary and I said big brother I said Kerry's nothing but genuine she wants nothing but the best for me so what the fuck <laughs> has <laughs> yeah. she done yeah yeah and now coming out it might just be that she's very flamboyant yeah well, people say about Kerry online is that she was trying too hard to be like Gemma Collins. See, but that's Kerry. That's just her. That's honestly, yeah. her, but they didn't show her soft side enough. Yeah, yeah. They didn't show it. Like, honestly, she is... Oh, sorry, pardon me. Oh, go ahead. Um, <laughs> she, honestly, she's just lovely. Yeah. Like, she was literally like a mother to me in the house. And she's so honest. On the third day of being in there, she called Zach Splinters. She said, you're going to have splinters up your ass. You're like sitting on the fence. Like <laughs> she's very upfront. Like you're have splinters. If, she, if she says something about someone, she'll say it to them. That's a good quality though. 100%. I, yeah, I wish they'd show more of stuff like that. Because I feel like her on Late and Live showed her soft mm, side. Yeah. And I wish the public got to see more of that, Kerry. 100%. Because she's honestly, she's amazing. So you got 
voted out, blah, blah. But then yeah. I see you again. Yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Were you actually in... Yeah, real so life. It, it wasn't recorded. It wasn't that recorded. Was, that was real. And you could see them all. Yeah, I could see them all. Oh my! And God. they all started cheering and banging the table. And I was like, "Fuck! I'm about to give like some I'm fucking gonna boss love. It. Yeah, And yeah. Um, I kept quite serious. Mm. And I was there, like, what did I say again? Housemates beware! Yeah, or someone's very two faced or whatnot. Who was that about? That was about um, Chanel. Oh, oh, okay, makes yes. sense. Yeah, because she—I don't know if she does it intentionally, mm -hmm. but she goes around and plants seeds in people's ears. Oh, yeah, but she don't come across like that. And no, for someone no. that doesn't like confrontation, mm -hmm. she likes to go around and mix the pot. That's crazy because on the show, she comes across as if she keeps herself to herself. No. Wow. But even, I thought you guys would have seen a bit of it with the Paul Olivia thing. She'd had a conversation with the girls. Yeah. And then had went to Paul, was siding with Paul, mm. and then coming back to the girls and siding with the girls. Yeah. yeah. On the fence. 100%. On the, the fence. Girl. And uh, when she sat with Jenkin and Tom, mm -hmm. they bitch about everyone. Today's sponsor of the podcast is BetterHelp. There's always times in our lives where we feel like we need to speak to someone and we may not feel comfortable speaking to our family and friends. It's also not good to let your feelings bubble up because it will always end up worse. Whether you're at uni, you're working full time, whatever you're doing, it's still important to take time out of your day to focus on your mental health. And this is where better help comes in. Towards the winter months, it's common to start feeling a little bit more down, a little bit more anxious. The weather's gloomy. It's not looking good. And also Christmas is coming up, which can be a very stressful time for a lot of people. Therapy can help admin all the stress, keep you grounded and also become a better version of yourself. If you're thinking about trying therapy, make sure you give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, so it's suited to be completely convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. All you've got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched to a licensed therapist who you can also switch at any time with no added extras. When you're busy, it often feels impossible to take time out of your day to speak to someone and just have time for yourself. And with BetterHelp, that's where they can come in and conveniently slot in somewhere a little gap in your day where you can just take a little bit to de-stress find your bright spot this season with better help visit betterhelp.com slash saving grace to get 10 percent off your first month that's b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p.com slash saving grace for 10 percent off your first month thank you for better help for sponsoring today's episode see that's one thing because i was a bit disappointed because i thought jenkin would come in be this really yeah. big personality really be really funny but only clips i ever see of him are him just being like his one-liners yeah or like i hate i hate them when they do that or hate when they do that yeah do you know what it is jenkins a smoker and uh, so we're not allowed in the smoking area 24 7 yeah so when he hasn't had a cigarette he's he easily irritable off. and i think you guys saw that when i fucking touched his shoulder yeah <laughs> yeah he's very easily irritable when he hasn't had a cig oh my god I know. fair but He's smart in the sense that he sits back, sits back, mm. observes, and every week he nominates the person that gets evicted. He knows. He knows. He could, I suppose as he well, he's knows. listening to what everyone else is saying. So he he's tactical. Yeah. So maybe the game player is him. Oh, I have no fucking idea. But you know what I thought was hilarious? He said in the house, he doesn't want to be famous after this. He wants to go back to his normal life. Mm. But on Late and Live yesterday, his friend Stacey was on there and she was like, yeah, he said when he comes out and he's rich and famous. So she contradicted him. Oh God. He's yeah. He's going to be like, why did you do that? I know, when honestly. When he comes out. But um, I think, honestly, when you're in that house you forget you're in a fucking game yeah like when i was evicted i wasn't like oh i've lost a game i thought i'm leaving an experience yeah so i think for anyone to have the mindset of playing a game and being tactical it yeah. must be fucking exhausting because you got to think about it 24 7 and keep what everyone else is saying in your head for that shit me and you fucking both yeah me and you both there's no way honestly no but um i can't say anyone that's playing a game you know I think Noki's not playing a game, but she's playing it safe. Very safe. Yeah. yeah. She's one that will sort of, she doesn't really say much. much. And I really wish she stuck up for Trish when Dylan was having a go at Trish. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about one it. One of the wildest fucking things I've ever seen yeah. in my life. That Honestly, was, she held her own well. She did. She fucking gobbled him up and spat him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, honestly. Yeah. But the way he was coming for it. So, 
Trish and Dylan in the house have mm-hmm. always had some underlying... Like unspoken beef. Yeah. Yeah. But they've never actually had a problem. Right. And I think when that prob- where that problem kind of started was with the misogynistic stuff with Trish. Yeah. Like bringing up uh, sexist r- comments within the ant game or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that's where Dylan's problem, I think, started with yeah. Trish. And then... He just went fucking gunning for her after he got nominated. But it wasn't even her that fucking nominated him. It was Noki. But also, like, as someone watched from the outside, when they explained, like, we picked one person each. Yeah. And we said we wouldn't question. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, so when Trish picked Olivia. Yeah. Noki and Olivia are quite close in there. Yeah. And they share a fucking bed. So I expected a bit more from Noki to be like, why do you want this? Are you sure? Yeah. Like, I feel like it would upset me. With this. Yeah. It would upset me. But I respect the fact she respected Trish's decision. Mm-hmm. I just wish she'd stood up for Olivia a bit more. Yeah. That's especially if you're sharing a bed with someone. 100%. Because that's really there's awkward. that sense of loyalty. Yeah. 100%. And it's, I understand why Olivia's fuming because she thought that was her bestie. She took it really well, though. She did. I would have kicked off. But do you know why? I think Dylan done all the talking. He did. That's why. So Olivia just sat there and was more. like, okay, I'm just going to let you fire away, mate. Do you think that was awkward though? Everyone just sat there while they're arguing. Like, I wouldn't know what to do. Um, I don't know. Like Jenkins was like, is this worth it? Yeah. <laughs> is this worth it? And then Matty's there. Like as soon as Dylan started calling Trisha pussy, which is unacceptable. Crazy. By the way, um, Matty's like, oh my God, guys. <laughs> like, so we can't be doing it, this. I don't feel like it would be awkward. It would just be like, what the fuck? Do you know well, what I mean? I am shocked that people still took Dylan's side afterwards. I'm shocked. I'm really shocked Like Paul and all that went over to him and took his side. And I thought, have we not seen what's just happened? Dick? I honestly think the way he spoke to Trish was vile. Yeah. It was un- like, cool, you're mad, whatnot, but there's a way of going about things. Yeah, even bitch. I don't know why this yeah. pisses me off, but in an argument with a guy... If he calls me a bitch, sorry, you're getting a slap to the Yeah, face. Like, and if he's like raising his voice calling me a bitch, I'm just like, that's a whole nother level... Of disrespect. Of disrespect. It's different where it's like, oh, you're such a bitch, but it's yeah. always like, you are a fucking bitch. I'm yeah. just like, what? Because sorry, if any bloke in there turned around and done that to me, I would have still been like... Are you fucking crazy? You'd have been left yeah. in handcuffs. Honestly, yeah. I would have put you in fucking prison. <laughs> Are you fucked? Yeah, no, it's no a way. different. It's a whole other level of disrespect. Do you think he's going to create more beef? Because I think this isn't the end of it. So I think with Dylan, I'd called it yeah. late and live. And I mm-hmm. said, he's a ticking time bomb. Like yeah. he's going to snap because you see it in his face. I think the reason why he'd blown up so much at Trish at that point was right. because when things would get mentioned about food, for example, or like he would hear things he didn't like, you would see it in his face. Yeah. Like his face would speak for him. But he wouldn't say it. He wouldn't say it. So it all bubbled up. And I Mm. think at that point he fucking exploded. How hungry are you guys in there? Oh my God, don't. Is it actually like, tell me what you eat in a day. Well, bread, bread, more bread and fucking bread. Like honestly, carbs and cheese. Like it's fucked. So we would have... Like bacon, eggs, sausages, toast. Like breakfast was all right. Yeah. Lunch, cheese toasties, probably. Oh, yeah. Hell, it was a uni diet. Yeah, honestly. Fine. Sometimes noodles, sometimes my fucking legendary cheesy pasta. I hope oh, they aired that. No. They did. Oh my God. But I really love cheesy no, pasta. Honestly, I make the best fucking cheesy pasta. <laughs> yeah. And they, I was like, yeah, I'm making dinner tonight. I'm going to make cheesy pasta. <laughs> Everyone's like cheesy fucking pasta. And then I went to Big Brother. I was like, Big Brother, I'm so proud. Like I'm making cheesy pasta for the house. Yeah, Made it. They all loved it. Went to Big Brother and he was like, you must be proud. You mix four ingredients together. <laughs> are you fucking joking me? Who the fuck are you honestly, speaking Honestly, like it was, I was, I felt violated, but um, cooked cheesy pasta. Uh, then for dinner, chicken dill. No, uh, well, yeah. of course. Chicken dill, chicken rice and peas, gravy. And that's made by Dylan. And that's made by Dylan. Okay. And then everyone, yeah, early hours of the morning, fucking cheese toasties here, cheese toasties there. What was aired about Trish is that she will make lamb like, fucking chops. Lamb chops at 2 a.m. Lamb chops yeah. at 2 a.m. <laughs> this it girl is and her it is lamb <laughs> chops, honestly, she's obsessed. <laughs> And um, I went to her, this was like the first week when she got lamb chops because we had the luxury shopping budget. Mm. And um, I went, oh, can I have some? She had like three lamb chops in the pot. She went, no. (gasps) And then I was like, all right then, someone's a bit protective over the lamb. Like, she was like, you're going to have a bit of pasta though. Yeah. 
I know, but you just live <laughs> oh off carbs and God. cheese. So it's just fat and carbs. Do you think Yimran knows how popular she is no. on the outside? So I went to her, I said, they fucking love you out there. Like, yeah. You, she, I think she just doesn't even realise how funny she is as well. At all. And she was like, oh yeah, but you don't know, like things might change, whatnot. Like she really doubts, she don't give herself enough credit. Yeah. She don't. Because yeah. even when she was in the mirror the other day going, I like big butts of it. <laughs> like <laughs> she's just fucking hilarious. Who was it that she, because she said a lot of people just wouldn't bother speaking to her. Who do you think she was on about? Was it Kerry? Oh my God. Just because there was a few yeah. moments at the start where she'd well, get really upset. I know. I made a lot of effort with Yingren because I think she's so interesting. Mm -hmm. The fact that she's only been in the UK for two years. Yeah. Fascinates me. Yeah, her yeah. English is incredible. Um, it breaks my heart she ain't seen her family. But um, I don't know. I was I didn't notice it. You didn't, yeah. I, but I loved our little language sessions. Like but she I suppose you me. wouldn't if you were talking to her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I suppose it wouldn't be something that I would, you'd be looking out but for. But I felt like I was living under a rock half the time in that house. <laughs> so I'd go in the garden, they'll be talking about something that happened. I'll be like, when the fuck did this <laughs> Yeah, when the fuck did like, happen? Yeah, so half the time I felt like I was living under a rock. But with me, I'm so dopey. I don't even pay attention half the time. Neither would I. So I just missed out so much. Now, now I've come out and I've seen TikTok clips. Yeah. I'm like, ah, makes sense. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Was there a, a game that you guys did that caused a lot of beef game that caused beef because there's one game that i didn't like what was it and it was when you had to put each other in line rating oh okay that was horrible so i got voted most untrustworthy by zach i think it was Zach. i think it was yeah but i mean he didn't go fucking wrong i called him a fucking game player <laughs> glass houses well um but at that point, it was two days in and we didn't fucking know each yeah, other well enough. You know, yeah. So no one took it personal. But with Tom, he kept on looking at me. So I don't know if they aired it, but I was like, why do you keep looking at me? Because at that point, when I got voted for like unkind, yeah. untrustworthy. Sorry, I welcomed everyone in that house with First, open arms. Yeah. And I get put for unkind. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like. Rude. Yeah, rude. Yeah. I unkind agree. now. Because I think, was it Tom and Chanel? That had a little argument after it. Yeah. They had well, like a... Tom called, basically called Chanel a see you next Tuesday. Oh. But I don't think they aired that. No, they didn't air that. So he didn't say you're a see you next Tuesday. Yeah. He he said something about he'll tell people there at, to their face what something along that I wasn't there right, for it. Right. But Chanel sat down with me and was like, yeah, he basically called me a Da, 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 da. I hate that word. Um, <laughs> honestly. And um, I was like, whoa. But Tom's a little shit star as well. Is he? He doesn't get much screen time, to he be don't. honest. But he sits back just like Jenkin does, observes. But he fucking had it out for me with winding me up. Really? Yeah. When you were in the bedroom, I know when you were in the bedroom and you came and spoke to Henry and Jordan. Well, do you know what? They didn't air a part of that argument. I'm ready. So when we were initially in the bedroom yeah, and they were going, whatever they were saying and I couldn't get a word in, I went, shut the fuck up. Da -da -da -da. And I walked out, I swung the door. I was like, you fucking idiot. Da -da. Yeah. And I walked out like they pissed me off so much. Yeah. So then I went in the garden and I think what Tom was doing was deflecting yeah. from what I was actually annoyed at him for. Because yeah. Jenkins understood and apologized, Fair. like straight away. Okay. Like he was like, yeah, I understand. I'm sorry. But Tom wouldn't own it. And that's one thing. And it's annoying. It is. Because with me, mm -hmm. I can take accountability and yeah. I can own up to in my wrongs and like apologize. And um, he just was deflecting, like speaking for Henry and Jordan. And I went, is your name Henry? <laughs> like, name Jordan. exactly like why are you speaking for them and so when he was he was so patronizing and condescending in that mm. argument the way he was looking at me i just thought you know what fuck off and that's why i walked off and i was like you need to know when to draw the fucking line it just made me die when you went back in the room like did i interrupt your conversation yeah. no and you went I didn't okay a conversation so i just checked with them it made yeah. me die i know he had nothing to say after yeah that. he was nothing like, cool okay i know and then he kept turning to jenkin like a fucking pussy like for Jenkins to tell him what to say and that's why you Jenkins know, was like grow up he was all that's all awkwardness yeah it was so he had said to me oh I just don't like awkwardness and I was like it's not awkward though if you say your piece 
an area, it won't be awkward. It won't be. It's awkward if you deflect. That's what I'm saying. Just own your shit. Yeah. And that's what I'm all about. Because that's what they all loved about me in there. Mm. So Noki would tell me, Trish would tell me. They all just loved that I own my shit. Yeah. So if I'd done something that pissed people off, mm. I would own it. 100%. Yeah. Because like, I may not mean to piss you off, but if I have, I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's all you can fucking yeah. do. In a house full of cameras as well, you can't lie. Don't. You actually cannot. And that's what I'm saying. So people that do lie, I haven't really witnessed anyone lying mm. in the house, but if they do lie, yeah. what's the fucking point? It's, but as well, like, there's a, doing little white lies, but I guess it's it's so awkward if you get then caught, because Big Brother will do that thing where if you tell a lie, then probably air what actually happens and it's yeah. so muggy, so you just might as well not bother. Honestly. I love it. Who do you think is going to be in the final? Who do you think and who do you want in the final? Okay. I think Yinren will definitely be in the final. Yeah. I want her to be in the final. Mm. I want Olivia to be in the final. Okay. Um, how many are in the final two? Let's go three. Three. And I want... Mm, so Olivia, Yinren and Trish. Yeah, I love Trish. Defo. Trish yeah. is fucking... She just owns She's her shit. incredible. I love that woman. And do you know what? She always reminded me I'm from South London. Yeah. So she would <laughs> she would say in the house, yeah, she'd be like, don't fuck with Hallie at any point. She'll switch. You know, <laughs> she's from London. the fucking streets. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And I just fucking loved her. Oh my God. And when I'd come out as trans mm. in the house, she was one of the first people to come up to me and like show so much Aww, love. Oh, yeah. Like Trish is honestly amazing. And yeah. so in the second week, I'd nominated Trish for being confrontational because I felt like if I was to go to her with a problem instead of talking it out she would automatically go guns blazing mm. and so after I'd done that I'd went to speak to her and I was like Trish like I felt like if I came to you with a problem and you would just be guns blazing yeah. what not and when she had reassured me that she wasn't mm. like that I was like fuck if she's up this week I'm gonna feel like total yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's and that's, so true that's the hardest part of the process mm -hmm. the nomination you have to do and most of the time it's two people it is and it feels backstabbing because oh, it is because you've got to go then be like hi I know I would prefer face to face I'm not even gonna lie oh I would much fuck that every week I said I would prefer face to face <sighs> I would much prefer it. Yeah, true. Because I guess it's out there. It's out there. And if you want to call me a bitch, you can call me a bitch, not behind my back. True. Yeah. And you can have it out. Exactly. Oh, God. And, I, and we can clarify things. Yeah. What not. Yeah, it'll just be fucking... That's hot. Better. I... Would you, would you write? Do you think they'll put you back in? I want to go back in. I want you back in. If they, if they do a vote to return and I get voted back in, I'll go in a fucking heartbeat. Ready? Would you stir the pot if you went back in? I don't think I would stir the pot. I would just keep a closer eye on people. And yeah. I would not make other housemates known what is going on in the outside world. Because I think oh, that wouldn't. sense of... No. Right. Because that sense of mystery and like not knowing mm -hmm. is what makes the show. Yeah. So me knowing what the outside world thinks and, and bringing that up in the house would ruin the illusion and ruin... Pe and, and would also, filter people. And I guess like if someone's like, oh people really love you yeah it would then be Make like their head explode yeah and that i think they'd start acting different yeah so if i did go back in mm -hmm. i would still continue to be myself yeah like i wouldn't filter anything but i would just keep a fucking close eye on people yeah i 100%. agree but i wouldn't air out what the public thinks i think that's a good uh like a safe thing yeah 100 well. because as well imagine i'm like yeah fucking dylan the public hates you <laughs> He's going to feel like shit. He should. But yeah, <laughs> you're so right. Yeah, so right. Do you, Who do you think's going this week? Dylan. I think Dylan. I think Dylan for sure, because definitely the way he kicked off at Trish, the public don't like it. And you nope. should see on Late and Live, whenever they say his name, it's oh, booze. Really? Oh, I love it. I know. So I honestly love think drama. it'll be Dylan. I can't see Trish go in. Maybe Paul. Because I love mm. Paul. Like, honestly, do you know what I don't like? In He's been called transphobic and all this stuff, yeah? Yes. But in the house, he would, I would say, was one of the, not only because they all were amazing, but one of the only people who actually, every day, almost every day mm. in the morning would say, you're here for a reason. You're here Aww. to make people proud. Look at they, they don't show yeah. shit like this. He asked me so much about my journey. Aww. 
he asked me so much about like what it's like being a trans woman. Yeah. He said, come to Liverpool, this, that, that. We've made plans already for when he comes out. Like, he's yeah. honestly fucking amazing. And I'm glad you've said that though, because I think a lot of people, there is definitely a pull hate train at the moment. And I don't like it because yeah. he's not transphobic. And also it's, that's very like a very big thing to accuse someone of. Very big. Especially in just this industry too. Yeah. And at this time is a very big thing. Big thing. And so what I liked as well, like speaking of transphobia, mm. Olivia had brought up that my eviction, because it's vote to yes, evict, yeah. oh, I forgot could to be up, yeah. um, because like of transphobes. Mm. And I really didn't like how Chanel and Jenkins had shut that down. Because it could have been. Yeah, it could have yeah. been. They just don't fucking know. And, uh, Jenkin being gay as well, I was shocked mm. because you genuinely do not know. And these like Facebook Karens and that, the things they're saying about me on Facebook, get a fucking life. Get a fucking life. Like, honestly, it's... Yeah. Yeah. I'm a woman with a dick. Get over it. What now? Like, literally, yeah. it's... it's yeah. But it doesn't fucking affect anyone else either, though. I don't. I'm not I trying to go shag your dad. Understand. Do you know what I mean? He might want it, though. He might. Fair fucking play. I just think... With stuff like that as well, if you're not if you're not trans yourself, I feel like you can't speak on those topics. Obviously, I know Jenkins gay, yeah, but I think you can't shut that conversation down because you don't know, and you're also not part of that. Yeah, and especially and like the way the world's going right now, like even Rishi Sunak, like fucking loser. The day yeah. before I went in the house, did you know about it then? No, no, I had. So when you're on lockdown, mm. you're you have you still have no phone and nothing so when you're in hiding you yeah. still have no access to the internet what's right maybe allowed to listen to the fucking radio that's crazy yeah i thought you'd have known no no fucking idea wow so when i had heard that i actually spoke on gaydio mm -hmm. and i was like i think someone that's meant to be representing a nation yeah saying that is absolutely disgusting it's so damaging. it is yeah it's fucking damaging we're all people did you, you know, when you told the house, you just, and you did it in such like a chill way where you just like, listen. Oh, listen, my heart was it. beating out my fucking chest. I was going to say, well, how did you feel? Were you scared or were you? Okay. So going into the house, I knew I wanted to make it loud and clear. Yeah. But I wanted an idea of the housemates. And because Read there's. the room. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And because they're so inclusive mm. and like, it's so diverse and everyone seems so open-minded. Yeah. I was like, okay, I went to bed that night, couldn't sleep because it was on my mind. Because Aww. that first night, honestly, everyone knew something was up with me. They was like, what is wrong with this bitch? Yeah. Because like, <laughs> I was going from conversation to conversation. Like I couldn't hold a conversation because yeah. it was on my mind. Because mm. I felt like I wasn't being authentically me, like I said. Mm. And um, so I woke up on the second day, Farida's fucking AGM and whatnot. And I was like, here we fucking go. <laughs> yeah. um, and then... I was just, my, my stomach dropped to my asshole. Mm -hmm. um, my heart was beating out my chest. And Nookie was like, Hallie has something to say. Yeah. And I just said it. And I was going to start tearing up. That's mm. why I put my sunglasses back on. Yeah. And uh, the mood, response though? I got from all the housemates was genuinely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was so, it was, it was, it made me really emotional, like in the diary room, because I've felt love before. Mm. But never at that mass. Yeah. You know, where everyone, all like 15 of them were all just so supporting and, and loving. And they just accepted it straight just away. Accepted it. Yeah. And it was just amazing. Like I was expecting maybe like one person to be like, oh, fuck this. Fuck that. No, no, no. Oh, really? You were? Yeah, no, but I don't know who, but you just expect you, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You just mm -hmm. fear the worst. Yeah. Because you don't know people's genuine opinions of things yeah. like that. But I just think, honestly, it was important to me to be loud and proud because... I want to show other trans men and women, like, be fucking you. Oh, 100%. You're beautiful. You're confident. You're fucking amazing. And um, I think you did your, what you went in to do, you did as well. Like, all the conversations that were aired about, there's one conversation. Oh, it made me so sad. It's when you were saying that um, it was you, Noki, and maybe Trish. Kerry. Uh, Kerry, that yeah. and you would say that you like, get upset some days because you feel like you have like manly features or whatever. Yeah. And it was so, but it was so nice the way Noki was like, listen, I think I've got little boy tits or whatever. Yeah. It was just a nice moment. So that being trans, I would say that's one of like the hardest things I go through. Although mm. the fact like downstairs doesn't match, that still really bothers me. Like mm. when I was younger, I went, I couldn't even like have a shower or a bath without crying my eyes out. Yeah. Like it's a real struggle. Um, 
And like some days you'd wake up and feel amazing mm. about yourself. Like I would look in the mirror and be like, yes, you're a bad bitch. Yeah. And then some days you would wake up and you look in the mirror and you just see your broad shoulders, mm. like your like brow bone. Like on all of it. Yeah. yeah. And you would just look at the manly features. Yeah. And so in the house that day specifically, I'd woke up and I didn't feel great about myself. Right. Yeah. And then Noki saying that made me like not feel as alone yeah do you know what i mean although they aren't trans they still have the same like feelings yeah so i suppose it's hard as well in a house like that where if you do feel shit and you feel this certain way about the way you look you're also in a house with really bright lighting yeah. cameras everywhere so you can't even be like it's fine because no one will see me yeah. today you just have to deal with it you do and Honestly, it's so freeing mm. because like Instagram, I love a filter. I love a filter, yeah. girl. Hollywood ball, get me on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but being on TV mm. and everything unfiltered and raw, yeah, it's so freeing because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you've seen me fucking looking like a zombie and a <laughs> yeah. fucking rat. It can only go up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. like, but it just, it feels very freeing and now I just feel confident as ever good as you should i do stunning girl i mean i'm going to get my lips done next friday Her. but yeah juicy lip babe i know i'm so excited i'm fucking buzzing and how has it all been um since leaving what is the what's the word not the reception is that the word i think so yeah i don't like, know what is it ha yeah what has the reception been like since you've left fucking amazing good. so i've had so many DMs, mm -hmm. so much love. It's amazing. honestly, it's it is fucking amazing. Yeah. And I feel that like, it makes me emotional at times. Like yeah. I'm there to my mom like, oh my God, everyone loves me. Like, <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> da, da, da. Like yeah. honestly, because when I tell you I thought I was going to be hated. I Which is thought. sad. And the thing that makes me happy the most, mm. like and I'm proud of myself for is making my community proud. And yeah. Because I've been getting a few messages from mm. like young trans people. Yeah. And hearing what they have to say and like mm. saying, I've made them feel confident. I've made them, I've inspired them. It's, it make it warms my heart. Yeah. Like it makes me feel super proud. You've done, like you didn't just go in the Big Brother house. Like, you know, sometimes you see these people on the shows and they haven't really, they haven't made, maybe impact's the wrong word, but you know, they haven't really done anything. Whereas yeah. I feel like you, even going on it for the time that you did, I feel like you made a very big impact. And just also on like reality TV. Yeah. Like when I spoke to Ella, she was like, trans people are not casted love Ella. for shows. They're yeah. just not. So I think it's amazing now that you were on Big Brother. And I just, yeah, I just think you've done fucking bits. Thanks, babe. And you've done it positively as well. Honestly, oh, most of the time positively. Listen, all the time, oh, you made great TV. When you fucking stormed out and you were like, don't speak to me. You know, when Kerry was like, come yeah. here. And I was like, here. I can't do this shit. And then you walked back in the yeah. door. I was like, me. <laughs> I know, honestly. No, yeah. And Actually, then, I will talk, yeah. No, I had a Britney Spears 2008 moment then. <laughs> honestly, I was like, yeah, how's yes. your food? And then when I, what they didn't show yet yeah. is when I went past them and went to the door, I actually punched the door. <laughs> so I went, let me in. So they opened the door and they like, honestly, I was fucking Oh raging. my God. My mum, my nan, yeah, they said, honestly, the, the camping task, mm. I'm not built for that shit. No one is. Fuck that. In the cold. I, and you in know what? Rain. Me being fucking naive, mm. I was like, listen, they're going to, their production's going to come and just They'll open the it. doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. And even like the cleaning, yeah. I was like, do you know Gemma Collins? Mm. She said something about they thought they would have cleaners. Yeah. I honestly thought that too. No, I'd think that too. Like, but no. You have to clean. You have to clean and you have God to forbid. fucking sleep on the floor when you're told to sleep on the floor. It's a, and they had like no. that rain game the same day. That was horrible. So everything was soaking wet. That was horrible. I mean, I had to crawl through fucking mud like a pig. Your fucking rain, what are they called? Like raincoats did Ponchos. fuck all. Yeah. You were all wet through. You know, it didn't show on camera. What? Do you know when Kerry flipped out? And yes. And was like, just do fucking rock papers in there. Yeah. She, her lips were blue. <gasps> were they? Like it had a tinge of blue because I immediately, after the rain had stopped, because she didn't have her glasses, I was holding everything of her. Yeah. And so I'd went up to her, put a glass. I was like, oh my fuck, your lips are blue. Like, honestly, she, she was, was a cold girl. She, she was sitting on the chair, yeah. When she'd got up, it was a puddle. <laughs> it's, I should have put the poncho over yeah. the chair. She was like, my fanny's wet, honestly. I love her. I'm really sad she's gone. I I'm am. sad you're both gone. I feel like two massive personalities have gone. I, I don't know if you saw my Instagram story, but when I found out Olivia and Kerry were up for nomination, I was on the sofa crying. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, literally crying. And my stepdad goes, oh, well, it's not that deep. Everyone's everyone's going to leave um, one day. And I was like, what the fuck? Read the room. Honestly, like read the room. I'm <laughs> here like room. crying my fucking eyes out and you're here saying it's not that deep. He's like, grow up. Two of my fucking besties are up for nomination. <laughs> Let me cry. Honestly, let me fucking let it out. How would you describe your big brother experience then in like one? I've said this like time and time again, but mm. that shit crazy. crazy. Yeah. Like honestly, like you, you're bored shitless most of the time. But when it's mad, it's fucking mad. I bet. Yeah. And you're glad you did it? I'm 100%. I'm glad you I'd did it. I'd go back. Though. Yeah. If they, next you're year, waiting outside the door. Honestly, next year, if they're fucking like, yeah, do you want to come back on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. fucking mad? 100%. Big brother. Big Send brother. Send her back in. Get me back in there. I need it. For me. Do it for me. Do it for me as well, babes. Yeah. Yeah, do it for me Honestly. <laughs> Look at me. It's all about me. Do Honestely, I would love it. Vote to return. And if I get voted back to return... I'll, I'll buy like 40 phones and just set up the app <laughs> on each phone. You're in. I, do you know, I really think it should be vote to save. Agreed. I agree. It's a bit harsh. It is. It is. Votes were fixed. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye. And and you get five votes. Really? Yeah. Well, people wasted their vote. And that's the God's honest truth. Honestly. See, I've enjoyed having you on today. Thanks, Grace. Loved it. You've been sensational. Have you got any plans for the future? Um, I just want to skyrocket. Valid. Yeah, I just want to be that bitch. And skyrocket you 